Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jerry Callahan, founder uh, and inventor of the uh, technology we're going to talk about here, also the CEO of ISI Technology. Some of you may know a company that I started in the mid-90s called Blue Rhino Propane Cylinder Exchange. At Blue Rhino, we redefine how consumers fuel their gas appliances. It was a great company. It went from zero to 4,000 retail locations in 12 months, had a terrific IPO, and 18 years later, Blue Rhino still has 80% market share. Today, I'm going to tell you about a brand new technology that's patented that's going to redefine the way the world heats and uses water. The first iteration of that technology is the HeatWorks Model 1, the world's first fully electronic water heater. I suspect most of you took a shower or a bath today, and I also suspect the routine went something like this. You walk into the bathroom, you go over to the valve, you set up the spot, looks about right. You go check your email, brush your teeth, all the time you're waiting for hot water to arrive. In that time, you've wasted five to 10 gallons of water or more. Worldwide, it's a staggering problem because we all have to do it. But why is that? Well, existing hot water heating technology doesn't save water, it's difficult to control the temperature, it's not energy efficient, and the things inside that get really hot to heat the water break when they get really hot. So we've solved all four of these problems by using electronic controls and the electrical resistance that's inherent in the water to heat the water instantly and naturally without using any elements or burrs. It's actually pretty cool because the only thing that gets hot inside the water heater is the water itself. So instant water heating saves water, 99 plus energy efficiency saves energy, and the technology is incredibly reliable. Our electronic controls are natural for Wi-Fi connectivity. So in the first page of our app, you can adjust settings and temperature and presets. Our favorite preset is what we call the baby preset, which allows you to configure the temperature to totally eliminate the possibility of scalding, which is great when the babysitter's over. The second screen, you can check reports, status, and cool things like exactly how much each gallon of hot water costs you. In addition, with our connectivity, the utility can maximize or control the amount of power that uh, the Model 1 can consume during times of peak utility demands. So with this great technology, we expect to gain a significant amount of market share in the replacement and the new construction market. But what about all those homes oh, that already have a water heater? Well, first of all, let me tell you about how much water you use. So 34% of the water that you use is heated, and that consumes 18% of your energy. With our technology, you'll save 24% on your energy and 20% on your water, which is like using no energy at all in your home for 14 days a year and not using any water at all in your home for 26 days a year. So while we're going to capture a significant amount of the replacement and new construction market, what about those homes that already have a functioning water heater? So the Model 1 is the only product in the world that you can integrate in your existing hot water system to augment its performance. Let me tell you about three applications that are only possible with our technology. The first one we call a booster. So let's say you have a remote bathroom, it takes a long time for hot water to get there. You install the Model 1, which by the way, this is a full-size model, uh, in the sink, un I mean under the sink, <laughs> uh, in the closet, or any place that's convenient, and that'll heat the water up instantly until the water from your main tank gets there, in which case it shuts off. That's gonna save a significant amount of water. The second, second application we call the extender. We've all had the pleasure of taking a lukewarm shower when the kids have used all the hot water in the tank. So you install the Model 1 in the outlet side of your existing tank-type water heater, and when the temperature coming out of that heater decays, the Model 1 adds just enough heat to keep that temperature constant. The third one's pretty cool. We call it the turbocharger. So you take this, and you, again, you mount it on the outside of your, on the outlet side of your existing tank-type water heater, but set that down to like 90 degrees or so. Whenever you need hot water, the Model 1 turbocharges the water up to the temperature that you want. This is going to save you at least 35% on your energy bill. So let's talk about the market for a second. So the U.S. water heater market is about $3 billion a year. The rest of the market, the world is about $10 billion a year. But let's talk about the market for these three new applications that any home anywhere in the world could benefit from today. But let's talk about the U.S. $132 million homes for these brand new applications times 395 retail is a $52 billion market, which again, only our technology can solve these problems. So it's fantastic technology that allows the users to proactively save water and energy while enjoying a luxurious and reliable experience, uh, which we think is terrific. Uh, let me go back and revisit my earlier example, and let's talk about, and let's imagine, what the life would be like in the morning, in the morning routine for a Model 1 customer. 
You walk into the bathroom, a body mass center sensor identifies you and automatically presets the Model 1 to the temperature you want. You open the shower door, a motion, active, motion activated shower head turns on the water automatically to the temperatures you want without touching any valves. You take a great shower, you walk out, when you close the door, the water turns off automatically. No wasted water, no wasted energy, no wasted time. This is truly the world's next water heater. We're taking pre-orders now at myheatworks.com. Thanks so much for your time. Right. By the way, we got some hot water coming out right here if anybody yeah. wants to come out and see how it really works. You guys want to touch it? It's actually... Well, take a look for it. Wanna? It's the verdict. Swag towel. Hang on. Oh, okay. Keepers? Yeah. That's all you We got more back there for the rest of it. That's okay. Yeah. It's the same one. Thank you. So how does it work? So, so I um, you didn't explain. So what happens is all water other than still water has electrical resistance in it. So the trick is to control the amount of power that goes into the resistance of the water to, to make the temperature consistent. So our patents cover, we have uh, 19, the number doesn't matter in the patent, but 19 different electrodes which uh, are programmed into a lookup table to give us 500 different power options for increasing resistance. So we sense the temperature 60 times a second and the microprocessor goes up and down the lookup table and uh, selects which pairs of electrodes which don't have to be adjacent. Uh, you can turn on one and two and one and five and 17 and 19 or whatever it is to get the right amount of power. Uh, and again, it does it so frequently, 60 times a second, that uh, the temperature control is fabulous. And you need to connect this to p electricity? Yes, sir, it's electric. Not, it's not gas? No. And it connects on Wi-Fi? Uh, it, well, it's, Wi-Fi is an option. There are a lot of people that don't want Wi-Fi. But Wi-Fi, it's a plug and play option. For what is the, what's the replacement cycle on boilers? So in general, they're about seven years. Okay. Uh, and so we think this one's got, uh, it doesn't have any elements to burn out. We use graphite plates, same kind of material that steel uh, mini mills use to melt steel. So it takes a lot of current density. Uh, and really, they last a long time. And the rest of it's just uh, you know microprocessors and standard off-the-shelf. And the size, talk about the size and the volume, because you know normal, I mean, they're normally huge, right? And That's right. So this is what they call sort of an on-demand water heater, so it doesn't store any hot water. So you get endless hot water. So you need more power generally than a storage tank would because it takes eight or 10 hours to recover from when you turn it on and this one heats water instantly. So the, the easy proxy to size it is, is for an apartment, one of these things is fine. Uh, if you want a bigger house, which is really sort of say if you want to take two showers at a time, uh, you buy two of these things and you can install them around the house in new construction, which is actually less expensive to do that, run cold water piping and electrical wiring than it is to run hot and cold water piping and have a centralized water heater. Um, or in retrofit, you can just install them around. Uh, or if you want to replace a tank, you can replace, put two of these, one or more, in parallel. Interesting. Why, why, why should you replace a hot water heater with one of those? Well, it depends on how much hot water you have. So we're limited to how much power we can put into it by UL, 48 amps per connected load. So that's why you, end up might, may, might, you might want to have to buy more than one if you want to take two or three showers a time. Oh, I see. That the, amount of, the amount of volume of water that flowing through and out and into the shower that you can heat at any one time is limited. Right, by the power that goes in because of the current UL limits, right. I see. So, so if you wanted to do one shower at a time, you'd have one of them replacing your hot water. If you wanted two showers at a time, you'd have two. And if you wanted three, could you set them up in parallel so they'd be boom, boom, boom? That, that's, well, how you, that's how you do it in parallel to sort of load share. Yeah. Right, right. And you can just put that right, right down where you, so if I want to just rip my hot water heater out, put three of those in, I'm good to go. That's right, yeah. I mean, you have to get an electrician to help hook it up. And a plumber. Yeah, and a plumber, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, just, so I talked about the water heater for the world, so it's pretty smart. It auto senses for voltage from 100 to 277 volts AC uh, in 50 or 60 cycles, so you can use this anywhere around the world right now. The fittings are three quarter inch and 22 millimeters, so it's ready to go. And all you do is you pull off the control end, and if you got Wi-Fi, you do it you know, off your smartphone, but if, um, if you don't, you just put a little screwdriver and you set the maximum amount of current that it can draw in five air increments from 5, 20, 30, or something like that. So literally, you could, in our Kickstarter campaign, about 20% of the units are actually going overseas to, overseas being to the non-North North, non -North America. How, mu how much did you raise in your Kickstarter campaign? So we raised 435,000, which was, you know, almost 2,000 units that we sold, but we really did it to get the one-on-one -on -one interaction with potential buyers to figure out what exactly their problems were. We, we enjoyed the sales, no question about it. But. 
So uh, the people who, who the 2,000 people who got one of these, what was the, what was the backing that they had to uh, give you in order to get one? So retail is $395. Our average selling price was $297 and change. So you know, the first 200 went out at 225 bucks, and you know, we sort of we got to 350 pretty quickly. Oh, what's your bill of materials? Well, I can tell you what it is, but let's put it, if we got healthy margins all the way through the line. I will tell you this. So this, these are all made in America or for local content. I could take this apart, and you could put it together in less than 10 minutes. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Maybe not me. Well, 12. Okay. I'll give you a little bit of help. Um, but it's really simple. It was designed for manufacturing. We went through three different deep sessions to do that. Uh, there's really the bill of materials, like 17 items, two circuit boards, uh, 19 graphite electrodes, uh, seven molded plastic pieces, uh, a couple but of control cables. You can sell <laughs> it profitably at an ASP of $300? Pardon me? You can sell it profitably at an ASP of $300? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. if you live in an apartment building where the uh, hot water is coming from some sort of system that's, that serves the entire building, right? Um, what's, and you want better hot water. What's the right solution for that situation? So what, you'd buy one of these things? Now, you know, if you look at apartment buildings, sort of say in New York City that may have some really aged infrastructure, right. you know, you might have a little enough trouble. Your breaker box might not be big enough in your apartment. But sort of anything that's been rewired since the 70s with the code that came out, electrical code that came out, there's got some enough, enough uh, power available. Um, you so know, sort of 30 amps, 240 so, so volts. You would, you would install it in the booster, uh, the booster configuration. You would just continue to, to get hot water from the, the basement boiler, but you'd stick one of these in front of your shower, or you'd stick it in front of the kitchen sink or something like that, and you'd, right. you'd get the booster? Is that right. how you do it? Right. Until the hot water showed up if you wanted to save water. And, um, and you could do what you've done here. You could stick it right under your kitchen sink, right? Exactly right, yeah. They only weigh about 12 pounds full of water. So I have a question. <clears throat> I never thought my... Uh watching of HGTV would come in handy on stage here, but I've seen them remodel homes and they basically put a natural gas boiler and then they use a pump circulator to get the water to the bedroom upstairs far away to save water, yeah. water loss. How does that setup compare to something like buying three or four of these for each room? So that's, um, that's really a good way to throw money down the drain, these circ systems, uh, quite frankly. I mean, uh, and, and not because you couldn't use one of these with that, but basically you've got a pump running all the time. It's like having a water heater that runs all the time. Uh, and so it saves you a little bit of water, but unless you live like in San Diego where you pay a ton of money for water, or in some parts of California you pay more and more every year, um, the water savings uh, uh, totally are, are more than offset by the fact that it's going to cost you 300 bucks a year to run that pump. Yeah, but you don't have to go brush your teeth and do some email. Well, but don't you do that every day? No, I have, I have one of those systems. <laughs> oh, you do? Research yeah, I got system? a big, massive pump that... I, yeah, I, so I you're better off putting some of these around the house. Yeah. Well, you, you may have just sold the customer. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, quite honestly, we sold like 25 today. I think the Backstage crew is buying like eight of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> You should, just, you should just stop there and, oh, and just I, leave. I, I, okay. That, 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 that. <laughs> I, I actually have, I, I have some, a few questions. So for me, um, my father spent his whole career as an environmental engineer in water. So I'm sort of thinking back to all the different safety issues that he talked about. And I think that on-demand hot water is really terrific. But one of the big issues with it is the amount of heat that's usually right there at the source. Because, and so the question is, with the heat that dissipates and the resistance method in the unit, how hot does it get and how do you handle well, that? See, that's a great question. So we don't have elements that transfer heat. All of our elements are electrodes. They conduct electricity. Okay. So when I said there's nothing in the, in the water here that gets any hotter than the water itself, you know, for example, like in the element we showed before that burned out, they get service temperatures like 800 to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and then they transfer the heat to the water. If the thermostat's set at 120, the elements don't get any hot, hotter than 120. Okay. So there is no sort of residual heat. I mean, actually, you know, when the thing's heating away, it's just room temperature on the outside. And I, I just remember all kinds of different things about mineral content, thermophiles, anything like that. Do you, are you going to have any issues in terms of what gets trapped in the unit? How often do they need to be replaced? Uh, no, you know, we don't have any issues with that because we know the elements, like we showed up there, you know, when they get that hot, the water boils out with the surface and boils the elements, the minerals on the surface. Yeah. Um, so these are graphite elements, so nothing sticks to them. You know, it's basically like lead. You can write with the elements if you want. Um, and so we don't have anything that sticks to them. Um, occasionally, and, 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 you know, I started this in 2006. We spent about seven years for long-term testing. I mean, obviously, you know, longevity is a big deal, right? Um, and so we spent a lot of time, most of that time, trying to figure out the right electrode material. Um, and so occasionally, depending on um, 
the kind of what's in the water, and we live in Charleston, South Carolina, we've tested them all over the country, but uh, so we get water from three different sources. One comes from a big lake, one comes from a reservoir, one comes from a well. Um, occasionally you'd see like just a thin uh, film of minerals on it, but it didn't affect the performance because they're conductive, and then they disappear. So they sort of fluff, slough off. And how many do you have installed? Uh, we have about uh, 15 installed so far, yeah. Okay. But we've done, you know, again, we've done years of testing. Sure, sure. Right, yeah. Can I, just one, one sure. question, which I'm not sure if you can answer, but I'm sure you've thought about it, is that, um, you know, when Sandy hit here in New York, uh, I was very happy that we had, you know, I managed to get our gas uh, and our water heaters back up. Um, it took like five days for electricity to come back up. Um, the, you know, how do you think about the electrical dependency here? Because clearly, if you're out of electricity, you're screwed. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that also means you don't have any cold beer and you can't, you know, can't check your email, that was, which is that a good was thing. Andy, welcome um, to New York. So, uh, you know, in times like yeah. that, um, gen sets work pretty well. You know, small gen sets, you can, yeah. you can ge get generated enough heat on this. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking particularly about the international stuff and as you think about the third world and um, because, I mean, just from a sheer size perspective and efficiency, I think it has a lot of potential. But I think you, thinking through the, you know, some kind of reserve power or something. Well, actually, we actually have a product uh, that we're working on um, uh, since you asked me. Is, um, so you use your, on average, you use 20 to 30 minutes of hot water a day in the U.S. You know, around the world, you know, we tend to waste a little bit of stuff, so around the world it's less. So we're actually working on a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a power supply full of super caps. So you'll plug it into like 115 volts, 15 amps on any place, and charge it up, so you'll have enough power to run this thing for the 20 or 30 minutes a day, and that would really be a groundbreaker for us. Because places like Italy, you know, most of their water heaters are only like three kilowatts or something like that, you know, yeah. 20 liters, something like that. But that's plenty of time to charge it up. And so yeah. there you go. New product announcement today. All right. So can, you, so can you heat it with solar and then have a battery pack? Because well, in so places it, like China, it, it, it runs on be... AC, so you need an inverter. Okay. But most, you know, PV systems have run on have a battery storage and then use an inverter to convert it back to AC. But it doesn't. It can be a really crappy AC signal too. Doesn't have to be super high quality. Any more questions? All right. That was ISI Technology. Awesome job. Very cool. Thank you.